It's time to talk about the very best comic books of the week. Drew was out on assignment in Kansas City trying to sell his wares at a Comic Con. In steps Jim from Weird Science. How you doing, Jim? Hi, Wes. Thanks for having me. Thanks for Drew for being in Kansas City. So he allows me to come in. Big shoes to fill, though. So we've got a couple of big stories that we'll get into while we're talking about these comic books. We have three indie books, I think two Marvel comics, and one DC book. The thing I want to talk about first is Nemesis Reloaded number three from Image Comics. Mark Miller, Jorge Jimenez. It's a fantastic comic book. We'll kind of get into the details here in a moment. But right now, it feels like Mark Miller is the best comic book writer in the industry in 2023. And it, he's got nothing left to prove. He's made his millions a few times over. He's got the Netflix deal. Technically, he doesn't need to be writing comic books. How is he more creative, inspired, and motivated to deliver good stories than anyone at Marvel, DC, or on the indie scene now? It is crazy. I don't I don't know what's the secret sauce he has because he definitely has it. Now, there's one thing about just being talented, and obviously he is. But like you said, I think that where it is is the passion for it and the idea that it is his created stuff. He's doing things. That, and it's it's so odd that it's that good. I mean, it really is. You're waiting for the, you know, everything to stop because you have the fat cat there, but yet it doesn't. He keeps going on and he definitely is inspired. No, he's got a, a big crossover book coming up. He's got a lot of things that I think the Monarchs are coming out. Mm -hmm. So he's not stopping. And it's already been like a great six months for Mark Miller fans. And he's putting out top dollar for these artists, you know, bringing in a Jorge Jimenez, bringing in like a Pepe Larraz. Obviously, Frank Quietly is going to be working with him and all these great artists. And he's sitting there and he's got this great stable creators to work with. And I don't blame them for wanting to work with Mark Miller because, one, he's going to pay you a lot of money, but he's also going to deliver you the best stories. Yeah, and they're going to be stories that people are going to read. They're going to read for years, and this is going to keep your name going as well if you do work with them. And it is funny. Like you said, by the end, where I get done the issue, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And then you have an ad for Nightclub. I'm like, that's good. You have the ambassadors. You have, I'm like, uh, and, and Magic Order. I'm telling you, it's like hit after hit after hit after hit and i i really do like all those and, and i'm looking forward to the stuff that hasn't come out yet and it just ends up again it just shows you that even beyond talent the idea of having a passion for it and really feeling through that especially you know in this nemesis book it really is a good book i don't know what i would be doing if the miller songs wasn't going on right now like half the good books in the industry wouldn't be being produced let's talk about nemesis reloaded number three as I mentioned, Mark Miller, Jorge Jimenez. This is a great issue. Once again, balls to the wall action. And I love seeing that Nemesis is always two and three steps ahead of everybody. As his plan is unfolding, they're actually filling in some of the backstory on why he's choosing these people. And at one point, he ends up uh, kidnapping, I believe, the chief of the police, and it's all playing out the way he wants to. And it really does feel like a really evil version of Batman that's super strategic and has a real big axe to grind. Yeah, and like you said, it definitely is an evil Batman. But even though it's way over the top, it's way balls to the wall, you still end up getting character moments. You still end up seeing things that make sense. And then by the end, just the idea of the crazy cliffhanger, I, I just shook my head. And I'm like, that is one of the most awesome things I've seen. But you say that a lot in this. And just as a bit of a disclaimer i like this way better than the original nemesis even that's how much i like this i think this reloaded is even better than the original and really i i love it every issue that comes out i can't wait to read it. and it's there's not that many comics nowadays that i get that feeling i'll get around to them but to actually want to read it to see what happens next and see how crazy this you know, how Nemesis is, this evil Batman, like you said. I couldn't agree with you more. It's absolutely fantastic. It's one of the few comic books that goes right to the top of the read pile, and it gets read immediately. You don't let it go down to the bottom. There's something else I want to talk about. We are going to recommend Superman Lost from Christopher Priest this week, mm -hmm. but with an asterisk. Obviously, we talked about how Nightclub is one ninety nine from Image Comics of Mark Miller. This is a 22-page story, and it's good. There's a reason we're recommending it. But it's $4.99, and there's nothing to this that makes it special. There's not a special cover on it. There's not an extra story. This isn't something people who have been salivating around for for decades or whatnot. It's just a simple 22-page Superman story, yet somehow it's $5. I don't understand. 
Yeah, and I don't understand it either. Like you said, it's good. And if you love Christopher Priest, then you'll probably like it even more. But by the end of it, there's nothing that's over the top special about it. I don't think people are like, oh, my God, I can't wait till this comes out. I think a lot of people actually don't even know about it. I've talked to a bunch of people. And then when you get to that price point, you wonder where did that come from? Where is that going on? Maybe if it was 28 pages, maybe it's something like that. But it's not. It actually feels like a very standard story done well, but nothing over the top, you know, fantastic to make it, you know, that price. You know what's also weird? Maybe you would think maybe Christopher Priest just charged him a really high page rate for this or something like that. This was edited by an editor that hasn't been at DC Comics for over mm -hmm. a year now. So you can tell that it was actually written and completed over a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, my, my thought is maybe they ended up having this on the side. They were going to have another, you know, Superman with the Justice League even included in this first issue. While you had Bendis doing the other super books, throw it out there, get more Superman out. It's odd because it's definitely something from the past. And you would almost say, hey, if they're going to throw it out here, you don't have to, you know, gouge with that price. That price is way high. It really is. If you are willing to spend $4.99 for a 22-page comic, I definitely recommend it. Superman yeah. Lost number one is definitely serviceable. It's actually pretty decent. Christopher Priest writing, Carlo Paguayan is the artist on this one. And there's nothing like mind-blowing about this. It's pretty no. formulaic and by the numbers, but it is very enjoyable, and it is almost all set up. Superman does get lost, but it's at the very end of the comic book, which is going to show you where the story is actually going. Mm -hmm. But he's got to go and fight off uh, some type of threat going on with the China. There's a dispute. It turns out there's alien technology. And he gets zoomed out of somewhere. Obviously, the Justice League were helping him with it. But if you're looking for just a cool Superman story that has some potential, I definitely think you could do worse. But at that price point, you know, you I almost know. have to put a caveat on it. Yeah, and the thing is, I... I always say to people like, hey, if you like the character in the book or you like the writer, always get the number one and check it out. But it is a little pricey, especially for the page count. Definitely. So that's our recommendations for DC Comics. Let's go back to the indies and talk about some of the recommendations we have there. No one number one from Image Comics, Kyle Higgins, Geraldo Borges on this one. The latest installment of this massive verse, whatever they want to call it, the shared superhero universe led by Kyle Higgins at Image Comics. I like that each of the superheroes has like their own feel to it. Radiant Black has kind of like a, a Power Rangers feel. Mm -hmm. Rogue Sun has kind of like a Spider-Man feel. And this is kind of like a weird crime noir superhero. I thought it was interesting some of the choices that Kyle Higgins makes with the character. We don't learn much about no one other than what people are saying about him. And everyone has some other point of view about the character and other pieces of information to give you. So as a reader, you have to put everything together, like as a whole story and what this character is, because you don't see him very much, at least in the very first issue. But I thought it was a really promising start and something pretty cool. I personally haven't really liked Radiant Black so much, but I think this has some potential. I feel like something different. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Kyle Higgins fan. I do like Kyle Higgins. He may not like me, but that's a different story. But in the meantime, the idea of reading this, I ended up jumping in. I'm not caught up on Radiant Black, but going in and, and reading it, I was intrigued. It ended up picking up definitely by the end because you're getting a lot of dialogue. But again, just to mention versus the Superman loss, there's a lot of pages in this. It's an oversized issue. It's only $3.99. I ended up going back and reading it again, and I'll tell you, the second read-through really did come off a lot better. I am into this even without not being caught up with Radiant Black. I thought that it was a good noir-type deal. It felt, again, there were points when it almost felt like a Mark Miller-type thing or a little bit of an influence of like a Brubaker, stuff like that. I'm not saying it's as good as that, but I got that that feel, and it, that's different enough for me to, you know, give it a, a check out, and it's this big, giant universe deal going on, so I'm intrigued by it. Yeah, there just aren't a lot of number ones coming out lately, especially on the indie scene. Where I'm like, oh, I think this is going to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to have that one. You're recommending The Walking Dead 59 Deluxe Edition. Robert Kirkman, Charlie Adler on this one. These are the new versions that they're releasing with colored pages and everything. Obviously, they've been doing it for quite some time. Mm -hmm. We're on issue 59 here. You personally didn't get to read The Walking Dead when it came out. And obviously, by the time you started reading comics, there were good ways through it. So exactly. now you're going back and you're you're experiencing The Walking Dead for the first time, at least in comic books, with a different kind of a, 
a perspective on it with the colored pages. Yeah, and it's funny. I kind of picked this. I always like to give it the shout out. I think, obviously, it's The Walking Dead. People love it. It's really good. But it goes along the lines of, say, the Nemesis Reloaded. You know, you're going back. This is a cool thing for me personally because I wasn't reading The Walking Dead when it first came out. I've never watched the TV show either. That's a, another crazy deal. And I'm really enjoying it. I see why it was so good. And you do get the colors by Dave McKegg. I think that that elevates it. I saw a lot of people before, you know, oh, I'm not going to touch it because it's colored. And that's nonsense. But you also, at the end, Robert Kirkman talks about how he wrote the issue. He has his outline. And it's really interesting. It has a big package. And I think it's something that, especially if you're like me and never read it, it's kind of a really cool way to, it comes out twice a month and you have fun when it comes out. But even if you did, I think it's something to go back and read. And obviously it's good. I mean, people realize that. Uh, and when you have a week where you're down on some of the comics, it's nice to have something that you can count on. Definitely is a down week. There's not a whole lot of great stuff to talk about. But the one of the things that's really standing out, at least at Marvel Comics right now, are those throwback issues. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying Avengers War Across Time, issue number three this week, Paul Levitz, Alan Davis. The thing I like most about it, what it does feel like, like a 1960s, 1970s era yeah. Avengers comic book. So it feels old school in the way that it's illustrated, but the pacing feels old school. This thing wastes no pages on stupid exposition yep. and dinner parties and stuff like this. We're talking action from beginning to end. Paul Levitz knows who the audience for this comic book is, and it's just a really fun, old-school throwback Avengers series, which is a great palate cleanser when you think about just how bad Jason Aaron's regular adventures is. That, that's exactly what I had. When, when you put this on the list, I ended up laughing because, really, this is the greatest alternative to what you have Jason Aaron doing. So if you have dropped off of that, which a lot of people have, I have. I end up reading it still, but it's, you know, nonsense. So this is like, okay, I still have an Avengers book, and it plays out well, and Marvel's doing it so well. And unfortunately, Peter David right now is having, uh, you know, health issues, so he hasn't been able to do his stuff. But boy, this is Alan Davis's art. When If, if I gave this to somebody and said, oh, this is an issue from 77, they, they would not know that it's not. It looks so much, and it has the feel. And like you said, it's funny because when I first got into comics, I used to think that older issues like this were kind of bogged down in things. Now I realize, no, they're not. You're just balls to the wall, and you're going from one point to the next quickly. You have a story that's very Thor-centric, which is cool, uh, but everything feels just classic. It, it does. From the beginning to the end, you kind of have a smile if that's your thing. Yeah, so if you're looking for something Avengers, definitely recommend that one. It's a lot of fun. You're also recommending Red Goblin number two. Alex Pacnadel, Jan Bazulia is on the art here. I believe this must be the further adventures of Normie Osborne as he it discovers is. his Red Goblin powers. Yeah. I'm a little bit goblin out at this point. We've got a lot of different goblin series going on. I think there's a gold goblin. Yeah. So I personally haven't checked in on this one. What am I missing out on? Now, here's the thing. I like Normie. I like the idea. And I'm gobbling out. I am symbioted out. But this actually, almost like we said about the book with Jason Aaron's Avengers. You know, we have the alternative deal. This, I don't like Christopher Cantwell's Gold Goblin with the Norman Osborn story. And Norman's in this with Normie. And I like it better. I like the combo. It's just started, but it's fun. I think that it's one of those where if I'm going to see what is happening and what's leading to the summer of symbiotes and all, this is the book that I have chosen to follow. It's kind of an asterisk of why I do give it the recommend because it's not the most spectacular thing, but it's better than some of the other stuff, especially that Christopher Cantwell Gold Goblin book, which I, I can't take. I just can't take his writing at all. So I'm kind of checking in with Norman and Normie here. And I do like the Jan Balzadwea art, if that's how you pronounce it. I do like the art as well and have some fun with it. So you're not going to be recommending Hellcat number one from Christopher Kent right now? No, no, I won't. I, I'm actually shocked that we didn't have Doc on here to recommend that. Give it the thumbs up. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm I'm done. And the worst is, is that I tried to end up thinking to myself, okay, Cantwell over at Marvel, and then he's now going to be going over to DC on some things, and I, I don't need that at all. The hits keep on coming. But Doc and I will talk about Hellcat number one on Monday on the channel. We do have a review of that one. 
Jim, thank you very much for joining us. Talk about the best comic books of the week and some of the bigger stories kind of uh, associated with them. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I hope Drew's having fun, you know, relaxing in KC. Perhaps you're at the end of the video and you're like, well, 15 minutes just wasn't enough, Wes. I want some more thinking critical. How could you do this to me? It just so happens I've made over 2,000 videos and YouTube knows what kind of videos you like and said, this is the video I made specifically for you. If you want some more thinking critical, definitely click this one right now.